Assalamu alaikum. Um, welcome back. This is my YouTube page on the history. I am currently doing my part three of the Ottoman Empire and I'm just going to hit straight back onto it. The Sojaks controlled some of the trade passings by the road stretching all the way from the port of Jelent into the Holy Roman Empire by the Mediterranean Sea into Anatolia and further on along the Silk Road through the Central Asia to China. Not just were wares, but also science, medicine, philosophy and culture were exchanged along the route, making the area prosperous and progressive. The multicultural exchange had positive impacts on minor groups in the region during the Seljuk takeover and later on the Ottoman Empire. Christians and Jews were most often at the time not proselytizing to the, uh, to the Islamic faith. In fact, a big part of the European Jewish population fled from the violent spread by or of Christianity to the Muslim territories in Anatolia. Both Christians and Jews were allowed to practice their religion within the Muslim community, other as a secondary second sense. In contrast, the Christian and Holy Roman Empire fought ruthlessly against indigenous belief. Muslims and Jewish people in the east, the Sultanate of Rum, kept its firm grip on Anatolia and withheld three attacks of crusades sent by the Holy Roman Emperor between 1096 and 1192. It wasn't until the Mongolians first struck the Sultanate at, at Israel in 1242 that the Sultanate started to decline and soon fell apart. The Turks had had to swear allegiance to the Mongols whilst the Sultan fled to the Byzantium Balkans. After his death a few years later, the Sultan of Rum was divided into smaller emirates, so-called Be uh, Beleks, of which the Ottoman family ruled one. The clash between the Orthodox Byzantine Empire and the Catholic Roman, Roman Empire persisted, and, is, uh, and instead of assisting their Christian brothers in fighting back the Belicolos invaders, the Catholic Church contributed to Byzantium's grievances. Pope Eurobal II urged his devotees to head to the Holy Land of Jerusalem and take it back from the heathen Muslims. This led to the First Crusade, dong dong dong, in 1096, which had, damaged, uh, which had a damaging effect on the Byzantine Empire. One result of the Long Crusade was the foundation of, uh, of several minor crusader states populated by Franks and Romans from the territory. These states interfered with the disrupt uh, and disrupted the Byzantine Empire whilst also occupying their lands. The empire had to put up with several more crusades passing by and even thought the crusades' incentive was to conquer Jerusalem and rid the land of the Seljuks. The ruthless behaviour of the troops merely led to annoyances and disputes between the Orthodox Christians and Catholics. The Third Crusade was the culmination of these, dis these disputes, and the Byzantine Emperor made a secret alliance with his former allies, the enemies of the Sergeks. Damn! Now led by the infamous Saladin, promising to help him fight back the Crusaders, Frederick Barbarossa, after this scheme became known to the Holy Roman Empire, the next crusade led to sack Constantinople in 1204, making the capital a crusader state under Catholic rule. Though Constantinople later was returned to the Byzantine world, all the commotions the crusades had created during the 200 years were irreversible. The empire was already weakened, and in the 14th century, two fatal civil wars diminished its military power and gradually made it easy target for surrounding enemies. The start of the decline somewhat continued, coincided with the Mongol conquest of the Seljuks in the 13th century, and the whole area was shattered and divided by the mid-14th century. As Byzantine, the Seljuk Empire and the Sultanate of Rum all had succumbed to external and internal wars during the term of the century, the territory was largely up for grabs by anyone willing to restore the region's former glory build a new empire. The timing was ideal for the Ottoman Empire to fill the power void left by, by the former empires. This is a very clear understanding of what uh, it means to run empires and basically how they can collapse quite quickly. In essence, most empires barely make it past a couple of hundred years. The Roman Empire is the template for Western empires to last a thousand years. is almost unheard of. In China, what they do is they generally reinvent it themselves every couple of thousand, every couple of hundred years sometimes. But ideally, their dynastical changes are what pole vaulted the Chinese forward. The Ottomans. The origins of the Ottoman Empire and its dynasty that founded it are surrounded by the legends and myths. Mythology around Osmond first and his close family uh, uh, created an image of a dynasty legitimizing their heritage and right to rule while some of it is surely is true a lot of it may also be sheer exaggeration i tend to kind of take the fact that it is and i don't want to offend my turkish followers but there is a lot of mythological uh, exaggeration that was got very little backing of proof even the true origins of the ottoman dynasty is heavily debated by modern historians yes it is 
The general opinion is that the Ottomans descended from the Kiao tribe, a branch of the Osgood Turks. This was never mentioned in any records recording written by the time of Osman I's life. But firstly, 200 years later, which makes it a highly contested statement, contemporaries writers would claim Osman to be a descendant of the Kiyat tribe to, ag to agorize him. The Kiyat tribe was powerful, prosperous and, and played an important role in the Caucasus region, both at the time and both before Osman was born and for hundreds of years to come. To link the Osman dynasty with such a tribe who would work as an incentive to keep up good relations with the actual Kijet tribe, and also influence the story about how the Ottoman dynasty descended from power and political influence. It was the supported the inheritance right of the Ottoman dynasty to rule the area, though this may never have been clearly settled among the historians today. We know that the Osman family was one of the many um, Osgrit Turkish people originated from today's western Kazakhstan, just east of the Cyprus Bay. Now, Many people don't actually understand this, but proving your historical tribalism at this really early junction is extremely difficult. You can trace your bloodline genetically, but tracing it whether or not you're part of... I mean, I know that I have Anglo blood in me. I couldn't tell you which part of the British Isles I came from, though. Um, I have Irish blood in me. Now, I happen to know that most of my family I come from Northern Ireland, so I can position that's where my Irish blood comes from. Me. Where the other parts of my blood come from, I have no idea. So it's critiqued about involving what tribals you actually were operating in. From there, the Sergic tribe of, of Osiris people moved southward into Persia and founded their empire, slowly moving west towards the Byzantine Empire. When the Seljuk Empire disintegrated, many smaller states were formed all over the Anatolia, and Osman's father, El Turugu, was the ruler of one of them. Legend has it that El Turugu and his army of 400 ho ho horse born fighters accidentally came upon a battle between two foreign armies. Heroically, he decided to intervene and support the side currently losing. With his help, they turned the battle and won. Erdogan learned that the, he had been fighting on the side of the Sultan of Kuya from the capital of Rum against the invading forces of the Mongoloid army. So he didn't even have a clue who he was fighting for. Or how he was fighting. Which doesn't surprise me. Because let's be fair about this. Sometimes adventurous. Um, this is not just in the Muslim world. But in the Christian world as well. You have Norman knights riding halfway across the European continent. Solely to adventure. To, 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 to get combat experience. To make a bit of coin. Tell a good story to the lads when I'm down the pint. Or fuck the wife. Notice that's the way the things think. From there the Seljuk tribe. The old, yeah. I did that. Uh, from, from the capital of Rome, against the invading forces of the Mongol army. As a reward of his action, he was uh, he was handed a piece of land in the northwest Anatolia, centred around the town of Soget. The truth is, this story is again under much debate, since it was never written down until much later. There is no clear evidence of how Androgo came into possession of the land he rules, or what his relationship with the Sultan of Rome all was. All we, all we can say for sure is that they became the embodiment, the, the embryo of the Ottoman Empire as Ostrogan settled down, got married, and later also had a son, Osman. The happy, uh, sometimes in the middle of the 13th century, but the exact date of Osman's, of Osman's birth was never recorded. What's fucking no? But I'm going to leave you there with that one because this is a good stopping point in the actual thing to do, and I'll do the second one and upload it as well. Alhamdulillah.